Avulsion of permanent teeth is one of the most common dental injuries which is seen in 0.5 to 16% of all dental injuries. Numerous studies have shown like uh, how various injuries can be serious in nature and what could be the prognosis of these avulsion. But and the most common question is what is the treatment option? So the treatment of choice for avulsion is always going to be reimplantation. Now it depends on whether it's a primary tooth or a permanent tooth. If primary tooth then no. We are not going to reimplant it. Just throw it away in the trash can. Ask the parents to discard the tooth if you know that it's a primary tooth. But if it's a permanent tooth, then yes, that's what we are going to talk about in this entire video. What is the guideline for reimplantation of a permanent tooth after a dental trauma or avulsion? Now you will be like, there are so many guidelines, which one should be followed, which one not. So in this video, I'm summarizing the International Association of Dental Traumatology, which is IADT guidelines for the emergency management of dental traumatic injuries for avulsion in permanent teeth. There will be a part on open apex as well as close apex. So this video is going to be one of the most high yielding videos for your national board exams and overall dentistry knowledge. Now, these guidelines are uh, actually meant for dentists or other healthcare professionals who are watching this video right now. But it is also very important for education purpose, for the public awareness to make sure parents and guardians are educated, teachers are educated enough to know what to do when there is an avulsion, sport facilities, schooling staff. All these people are actually at the site of injury and not the dentist. Avulsion does not occur in a dental office, rather it occurs in the school or in the field or in sports playground or in uh, where at home probably. So these are the people who really need to be more informed about avulsion and it's our job as a dentist to educate them. Now, let me quickly give you a general protocol which does not involve anything else, just a simple avulsion. If this happens, then what is the general protocol? And then we'll talk about each specific incidence. So first step is find out whether the tooth is permanent or primary. If it's primary, discard it right away. If it's permanent, that's when we want to re-implant the tooth. First step is going to make sure the patient remain calm, the parents are calm. Pick the tooth by crown if you, if possible, or ask them over the phone to pick up the tooth by the white part, which is the crown part. Avoid touching the root part. If you think it's not too dirty, not too messy, if it just fell on your uh, house floor, it's not too dirty, then you can put it back in the socket immediately. And that's the number one treatment to put it back in the socket immediately. But if it fell on a ground, on a sandy beach or somewhere messy, then you might want to rinse it with milk or saline. So milk is something which is more commonly found in the households and saline is probably found somewhere in the field or somewhere in the school. Then you can use that to rinse the tooth just, on, just to remove the debris and uh, make sure that you put it back in the site or ask the teacher or the staff, whoever has called you to ask them to put it back into the site and ask the patient, the child to bite on a gauze piece. If they cannot re-implant the tooth, there could be various reasons. They are really not sure what to do. It's not their child. They are not responsible for this child. And so many more reasons a person can give you over the phone that, nope, I'm not comfortable re-implanting that tooth in the child's mouth or the child is too cranky, child is too scared. There's so much blood. I'm scared of blood. Thousand reasons could be there. But if they cannot re-implant, that's when it should be stored in a medium. Now there is physiological medium, there is non-physiological medium. Overall, the four possible medium are milk, which is most commonly found, HBSS, which is like textbook, but it's not commonly found, saliva, which can be parent saliva or patient saliva, and lastly, saline. So this, and this is in descending order. And finally, you as a dentist will be seeing the tooth either in the patient's mouth, in the socket, or in the storage media, and you will decide your treatment plan based on what is the status of that tooth. The outcome we are most worried about is ankylosis whenever we re-implant the tooth. And for that, assessment of the pedial cell's viability is very critical. And that's how we can dis uh, divide our tooth uh, status into three categories. The first category is when we re-implanted the tooth immediately, 
uh, within 15 minutes of falling down maybe we just clean the debris a little bit but just put it back in the socket right away and in this case the pdl cells are most likely to be viable there is the least chance of ankylosis second case is when tooth was probably kept in storage media or maybe it was kept in the mouth but then it was extra oral for 60 minutes Whatever is the case, the PDL cells may not be or may be viable, so we are in the middle. The third is when, whenever extra oral time is more than 60 minutes, whether it's in media or not, the PDL cells are not viable anymore. So our treatment plan is going to depend on the extra oral time as well as on the status of the apex. Is it closed or open? So let's talk about the closed apex first. What is the treatment guideline for Evil's permanent tooth with closed apex? So for closed apex, coming back to the same one, if we reimplant it at the site immediately, at the site of injury, then what are our steps? First, clean the tooth at the site with water, saline, chlorhexidine, whatever is available to you. Verify the correct position of the tooth, both clinically as well as radiographically. Now, if the tooth is planted correctly, then you will leave it in the position as it is, right? But if it's malposition, if it's not in correct position, then you'll use slight digital pressure to correct the position. And how will you do that? Your next step is going to administer local anesthesia which without vasoconstrictor. And that is one thing I'll keep repeating on without vasoconstrictor because if you put vasoconstriction, you will restrict the blood supply that might again hurt the pedial cell viability. So you don't want to use epinephrine, you want to use plain local anesthetic. Now, if it was reimplanted incorrectly and the patient is seeing you within 48 hours after that avulsion accident, then you can still take it out and reposition in the correct place if it's within 48 hours. The next step is splinting. For splinting, you will stabilize the tooth for two weeks time using a passive flexible splint such as a wire of diameter up to 0.016 inches or 0.4 millimeter bonded to the tooth and adjacent teeth just do not touch the gingival tissues and proximal tissues and proximal areas or you can use a nylon fishing line 0.13 to 0.25 millimeter which can be used to create a flexible splint which is a cheap and quick way to do this kind of splinting using composite to bond it with the teeth but remember nylon uh, splint fishes are not recommended for children when there are only few permanent teeth for stabilization as uh, the patient grows and the development happens the splint may become loose Next steps are to suture any gingival lacerations, initiate a root canal treatment within two weeks after reimplantation, administer systemic antibiotics, which is a big, very important point to remember. Systemic antibiotics plus tetanus stat status. If the patient does not have an updated tetanus antitoxin, then you will give them one. Provide the post-operative instructions and make sure you use regular follow-ups. Number two is going to be when the tooth is kept in physiological medium or is stored in non-physiologic conditions but with extra oral time less than 60 minutes. In both cases, the PDL may or may not be viable. In that case, the guideline says if there's any visible contamination or gross debris, uh, rinse it with saline only on the root surface. Now, most probably the patient has brought the tooth to you either in a storage media or they have placed in the socket but within 60 minutes in either ways you will assess the condition of the tooth clinically as well as radiographically if they have put it back in the mouth then you will assess it clinically and radiographically if this is in correct position but if they provide you in the storage media then again you will just check how the status of the tooth is now we will be repetitive we will apply local anesthetic without epinephrine we explain the reason why irrigate the socket if the tooth is not in the socket and you also want to examine the tooth for any fractures or if there is any coagulation that has already happened a blood clot that has already happened so you want to remove any coagulation or any co uh, blood clot from the a socket using a rinse of saline then you can replant the, uh, the replant the tooth with some slight digital pressure do not use excess pressure when reimplanting the tooth once you have reimplanted uh, verify your position clinically as well as radiographically uh, you want to stabilize and as we just discussed there are two possible splints which we will use for two weeks the flexible wire or the nylon fishing line so i'll be repetitive on these two as well this is how we will stabilize for two weeks 
Next, you will suture any lacerations if there is any gingival laceration. After that, you will initiate root canal within two weeks of the reimplantation. You will administer systemic antibiotics as well as check status on tetanus. If they don't have coverage, you will provide them with tetanus antitoxin, give them post-op instructions and make sure you follow the regular follow up protocol so the third one is when the extra oral time is longer than 60 minutes the patient did not put that in any storage media and did not show up within 60 minutes of the avulsion in that case the protocol is to remove debris rinse it with saline uh, give local anesthesia um, local anesthesia without epinephrine irrigate the socket with saline examine the socket if it's any fracture then put it together remove any coagulum now you will replant the earth slowly and gently see we are not changing any protocol so far verify the position clinically and radiographically and stabilize the earth using again the same two protocols flexible splint for two weeks you will suture any lacerations rct within two weeks to provide system antibiotics as well as tetanus antitoxins if needed post-op uh, post instructions and lastly follow-up but you'll be like i repeated the same protocol three times then what is the difference the difference comes in the prognosis of these three treatment for the three type of aversion and their extra oral time the delayed the reimplantation more poorer the prognosis the expected outcome is going to be ankylosis also known as replacement resorption. So you should prepare your patient for this kind of outcome along with other outcomes which we will discuss later in this lecture. There is a goal, to, uh, three main goals. The first is to preserve the aesthetics because mostly it's the front earth. Second is function and third is the bone height and width. Remember, inform the patient about a specific treatment which is known as the decoronation treatment. And the decoronation is something like a revascularization where you remove the uh, coronal part of the tooth and you just leave the root in there but you induce some fresh bleeding from the apical area and you try to uh, close it with sutures in case of an extra oral time greater than 60 minutes and that's where i said that it would depend on uh, the extra oral time what kind of treatment we are going for so mostly decoronation treatment is done for uh, the ankylosis after 60 minutes extra oral time also a good point to remember that the nylon fishing line are not recommended when there are only a very few permanent teeth present and the rest of the teeth are all deciduous because of course when the patient is growing it would be less stabilized last point to remember is if there is an alveolar fracture or the jaw fracture then we do not give them flexible splint we give them a rigid splint for four weeks so for avulsion it's two week time but for any fractures it's going to be a four week rigid splint and that was all about uh, whenever there is an avulsion of a tooth with close apex now let's talk about avulsion of a tooth with open apex i'm going to be very quick because everything is going to be super similar to what we just read i will divide this into three categories again how we discussed last time first one was when there is an immediate reimplantation at the site of injury second one when there is only less than 60 minutes extra oral time third is when there is greater than 60 minutes of extra oral time so let's discuss for each of them for quick reimplantation it would be clean the tooth put it in the socket or check the socket if there's any bleeding just clean it leave it in correct position if it was correctly placed but if it's not then gently replace it uh, with a gentle finger pressure give local anesthesia with ep epinephrine stabilize give suture uh, now the important treatment is going to be per revascularization rather than the root canal treatment which is done for close apex in open apex we will do pulp revascularization to avoid any external resorption these kind of resorptions are very rapid in children if spontaneous revascularization does not occur then epoxification or pulp revitalization or root canal treatment should be initiated as soon as pulp necrosis and infection is identified I'm pretty sure you memorize the next few steps, which is administer systemic antibiotics, check tetanus status, provide post-op instructions, and follow up. Next is when the extra oral time is less than 60 minutes, we will check the avulse tooth, remove any debris, and if it's stored in the medium, then we will rinse it, make sure it's nice and clean, place the tooth in the storage medium while we are taking exams and history of the patient, then we'll administer local anesthetic without vasoconstrictor, so remember that one, irrigate the socket with saline if it's not placed in the socket, examine the elbow socket, there should be no coagulum, no fractures if there's fracture, put these segments together, reimplant the tooth, 
slowly with slight digital pressure, verify the correct position both clinically and radiographically, then you will stabilize, suture, do revascularization, and if not possible, then I discussed all the op option already, administer systemic antibiotics, check tetanus status, provide post-op instruction, and follow-up. Lastly, let's talk about greater than 60 minutes extra oral time for a tooth with open apex. Again, we will do the same thing. We will make sure the tooth is nice and clean, rinse it, leave it in the storage medium while we are taking this history if it was in this medium. Administer local anesthetic without vasoconstrictor, educate the socket, examine the socket for any fractures, no coagulum, reimplant the tooth slowly with slight digital pressure, verify the correct position clinically, radiographically, stabilize, uh, suture the gingival laceration, revascularization, administer antibiotics, check tetanus status, post-op and follow-up. Boy, this is so repetitive, but yes, it is important to revise it so many times. So what are some generic outcomes you should mention in front of the patient or remember? Periodontal healing, pulse pace healing, pain, discoloration, tooth loss, quality of life, aesthetics, number of uh, dental visits, the trauma and anxiety to dental treatment due to this trauma. What are the injury specific outcomes? Intraocclusion and ankylosis. And this was all for, from a quick video on management of traumatic dental injuries of avulsion of permanent teeth from the International Association of Dental Traumatology guidelines. Uh, as posted here, please go on this article if you want more information or read thoroughly. And thank you for watching this video. Make sure you like it, share with a friend and subscribe to my channel. Bye.